Special counsel Robert Mueller is wrapping up his investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election, and Washington lawmakers are eager to see it. The report, summarizing the investigation, is expected to be handed over to the attorney general soon, who will decide what's made public. A Department of Justice official has confirmed to CBS News the report will not be released next week. Now, you'll recall President Trump will be in Vietnam meeting with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. And everybody knows it's a hoax. It's one of the greatest hoaxes ever perpetrated on this country. So I look forward to seeing the report. If it's an honest report, it will say that. If it's not an honest report, it won't. Six former Trump associates have been indicted or pleaded guilty in connection with Mueller's investigation to crimes ranging from tax evasion to lying about contacts with Russians. But Mueller hasn't charged any American of conspiring with Russia to help the president win the election. Next week, President Trump is set to once again meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. CBS 2's national correspondent Christine Frizzau explores what, if anything, has changed since the last time they met. An unprecedented first meeting. President Trump now readying for round two. And he says the goal remains the same. Well, I'd just like to see ultimately denuclearization of North Korea. Analysts say even that one word, denuclearization, needs clarification. The UN definition put in writing as part of any agreement. Which is their abandonment of their nuclear and missile arsenals, as opposed to the North Korean definition, which is global arms control. They'll go to zero when the U.S. goes to zero. Bruce Klingner worked as chief of the CIA's Korea branch and says additional demands should include North Korea's acceptance of international standards of verification and detailed descriptions of all timelines and requirements of all partners involved. He says since the last meeting, North Korea has done very little, but the U.S. has done quite a bit. Since Singapore, the Allies uh, and the United States have canceled at least nine military exercises, and we've imposed constraints on additional exercises. That's risking degrading Allied de deterrence and defense capabilities. This expanded relationship between the White House and Pyongyang is something the president has touted as a signature foreign policy achievement. But critics argue there's a reason previous presidents have been unwilling to negotiate with North Korea. Laura Brown suggests these meetings could be a useless and dangerous endeavor. What's very disconcerting is how much we have seen President Trump embrace people who are dictators or authoritarians and how rare it has been for him to embrace our allies. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzell. So let's go to our national question of the day. Has the U.S. made progress in reducing the nuclear threat posed by North Korea? Head to IdahoNews.com to vote. You hover over the news tab, top left corner.